It's Tuesday, and I thought for a Tuesday video I'd do a little bit of editing. I'm here in Patagonia, obviously, and I've been leading a workshop. Also, obviously. And one of the things I'm always trying to push, or an idea I'm always trying to push on these workshops, is you have to get it right in camera. I get people all the time asking me, how do you make it look like this? How do you make an image look like this? How do you make the sky look good on a gray day? How do you make mountains look like they're glowing on a day that they don't glow? And the reality is you just, you can't do that. That's not how it works. I'm always pushing the idea that you gotta get it right in camera. And so I wanna talk about that a little bit and I also wanna walk you through one of my favorite images I've ever taken in Patagonia. So I guess let's start with maybe story time and I'll walk you through the image and how it was made because I do think it was quite cool. We arrived at Torres del Paine for our first sunrise shoot. And when we got there, the weather was miserable. It was so bad. In fact, we got to the parking lot and it's like fall season, so peak photography season here in Patagonia. And the parking lot was full of cars, presumably all photographers. But the weather was blowing sideways. It was pouring rain, howling wind, gusty wind. And a lot of the photographers from the parking lot left. They, we just saw them pull up, they waited for 15 minutes and they left. I had this positive outlook because I know how Patagonia is and sometimes when the weather looks the worst, that's when you get the best light. So I was being really positive, at least at the start. Uh, to be honest, I don't think it's that bad. Ow, I got water in my eye. And Tom eventually said to the group, guys, we all have weatherproof stuff, we all have waterproof stuff, Let's waterproof all our stuff and let's walk to the location because best case scenario, we get light. Worst case scenario, we can location scout for another shoot another day or later in the day. So that's what we did. We headed out in the rain and wind and we went looking for a shot. We got to the location, which is this lake near Mirador Cuernos, and the light was flat. It was overcast and cloudy. It was still miserable, although the rain kind of stopped. And I said to the group, if anybody wants to come with me, I'm gonna show you a spot around the lake that there's this dead tree forest I photographed last year, which I'll show you the photo of right now, that has the potential for a really good photo and really good light. So half the group said, cool, let's do it. Let's start walking. And we walked and we got no more than about 50 meters before the light just punched through the clouds and started hitting Pine Grande, which is the mountain that you're seeing now, in the most incredible way. Basically, I just looked at the group and I said, drop your bags, get your gear out, and take some pictures because this is incredible right now. And I wanna take credit for the composition skills of this tree, but I really can't because it was luck. This is just where we stopped. This is just where I took my bag off my shoulders, dropped it down, and then, you know, saw the scene. And I went, that's a photo. That's a really cool photo. And not only is it total chance, it's also luck because the water levels usually aren't that high at the lake and that tree's usually not in the water. So drop my bags, look at the scene, and I think to myself, that light looks amazing, that tree looks amazing. Let's put this frame together in an interesting way and I framed it up and I shot it. and right away the first shot I took, I loved. So I'm gonna now show you guys how I edit it, but I wanna get the point across that you gotta get it right in camera. It's a beautiful tree, it's a beautiful location, it's a beautiful shot, but this shot wouldn't have worked if the light didn't work the way it did and if I wouldn't have shot it the way it did. So I shot it um, polarizer with a two stop medium grad ND and also with a six stop ND to really smooth out that water. So you don't get it without doing that. But I'm gonna show you how you can then take the image to the next level with a little bit of editing. So let's go over to Lightroom. So this is the image and I'm really, really happy with it. This is the edited version of it. There's a bunch of stuff going on. I have done a quite heavy edit for my style on this image, and I'm gonna just walk you through how I did this. So let me hit reset, which scares me because I don't know if I'll be able to do it again this way, looking quickly how it is. Hitting reset and checking it out. This is how the image looked out of camera, and you can see it's just totally, totally flat. 
But if we look up here at the histogram, you can see that all the information is right there in the middle of the histogram. There's no image, there's no information clipped on either side. So there's a lot of stuff to work with. The first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to get rid of this rock. This isn't a good composition. This was actually my third or fourth composition. But I thought, you know what, let's play with the rock. The reason I kept this one instead of the other ones is because of this light here in the middle of the mountain. So what I did to fix this or shape it a little bit better is I went to an 8x10 crop. And then I sucked it in a bit like this. So something like that, and the reason I like this crop is you have the tree right at one third and you have the mountain one at, right at one third up here. So let's hit that crop. And that's more or less, I really I really should have saved the original, but this is more or less how, how, it, how I have it, um, cropped at least. Let's go on to the next step. I always take the next steps, which is getting that dynamic range a little bit wider. You can see the histograms all there, so we can spread that out by dropping the highlights a little bit by opening the shadows up a little bit, by hitting the whites. I actually think it probably needs to be darker. So we're gonna bring it down like that. And then um, punch the saturation a little bit via the vibrance. I actually usually don't hit saturation hardly at all. So vibrance up a little bit, I think probably 35 to 40. Um, I think this image needs to be contrasty, so punchy like that. I'm gonna bring the blacks down a bit. I think the dehaze was probably up as well because it was quite hazy. And I'm really, really, really timid with dehaze because it can bring out a lot of noise. But on this image, I think it really works to bring it all the way out. I'm also going to use a grad filter like this on the sky to drop the exposure and make it even more dramatic. And I'm going to bring out the contrast even more, the whites up there even more. Something like that. Maybe add the clarity a bit more to bring out that edginess. And then I'm going to bring the clarity down over here, actually, because I actually like soft images. So overall, I want it to soften a little bit. Something like that looks really close to the way I had it edited. I might have even had this as a square now that I think of it. Let's have a look at it as a square. Yeah, I think as a square, it really works as well. It's a little bit messy over here. Part of what I don't like about this image is that over on the right side of the image, it's very clean in the in the water. And on the left side, there's just too many rocks. Obviously, you got this big water spot here too. I think this will clean up really quickly. I hope it will. By doing that, you won't even know it's there. I noticed this is a cloud, not a water spot. I thought this was a water spot at first. You see this giant blob? But to me, it's distracting. So. I'm going to go like this and just remove some of the edge to it by adding a feather to the clone stamp, maybe even more, and just running around it like this. I know it looks a little bit crazy, but I think it'll work. Fix some of that edge. I might do another one and zoom out. Yeah, more or less, you get something that looks like that. The image, I think, is complete. I think I do want to clean up the foreground a bit. So... I might remove, let's get rid of this feather, shrink the size of this. I just want to remove some of these rocks. Just, it doesn't need to be a lot of them, just some of them. I might even see if the clone stamp tool removes this whole piece here. And that's it. That's the edited image. Uh, it's an image I'm really, really, really happy with. I do wish that there was fewer rocks in here. But overall, I think this image is really, really powerful. And I think more so, it's the type of image that will really, really print well. So I'm going to work on it a little bit more over the next, you know, two weeks or so. And then I actually might make this available for limited print uh, over on my website. Usually when I do limited prints, I print like 10 of them, quite large. And then uh, I sign them, you get a certification and stuff like that. And I, I send them out to 10 people if 10 people want them. And um, yeah, that's it for today's video. Thanks for checking in. There's still some Patagonia content on the way. Uh, quite a bit of it, actually. We're having way too much fun on this trip. Exploring, making videos, and taking pictures, of course. So I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.